This video is an introduction to the EBSCO folder, a tool that will let you easily collect and organize research and then access it from anywhere at any time. It will also save you lots of time in the long run and honestly, spare yourself some grief. When you're looking at the results page in OneSearch and evaluating the resources available, you can see that there are small blue folders to the right hand side of the record. When you select those images, you can see that you're setting the articles aside in a digital folder. You can access that folder by selecting Folder View or EBSCO Folder at the top of the screen. Either way allows you to access the digital folder. The important thing to remember here is that this link is not stable. I repeat, this link is not stable. So that means you cannot copy and paste this link and access these same results later. Instead, you'll want to email the results to yourself or create an EBSCO folder. The first thing I'll demonstrate is emailing the results. Select all and then select email. Enter in the email that you'd like the results to be sent to. Include a subject line. And then what's wonderful is that you can select a citation format. For this example, I'll select APA and then send. Here's an example of the email you'll receive. You can see that the article is attached as a PDF and that the email includes a reference in APA citation format. I recommend that you always double check the references and there's a friendly reminder in the email as well and for good reason. When I compare this reference to the examples found in the APA citation guide from the Learning Support Center, I can see the articles need to be included with a DOI. If there's no DOI, we need to include the database name and accession number. The email itself includes a link to the record in the library database where we can find that missing information. At the bottom of the record is where we would find the DOI, but there's no DOI here. Instead, we can see the database name and accession number. The other option is to sign up for an EBSCOhost account, which will allow you to keep and access these records in your own digital folder. And you can sign up for free. Simply input the required information and we recommend that you use the same username as Moodle. You don't have to, it's just an easy way to remember your username. And be sure to create a strong password, one that includes upper and lowercase letters, a number, and a symbol. If it's not strong enough, you won't be able to sign up for a folder. Once you sign up for an account, the articles that you selected will be automatically found in the main folder. A great feature of the EBSCO folder is that you can create new folders. Select Create New Folder, enter the folder name, then select Save, and then you can find the folder here. You can even create subfolders by again creating a new folder and then selecting the folder that you'd like this folder to be a subfolder of. As you can see here, I've created a few folders. This is a great option to use if you have multiple courses that all involve research. When I expand on College Success, I can see my subfolder here. For these new articles that I found, what I can do is select them all and then select the folder that I'd like them to be moved to. The articles have been moved from the main folder into the subfolder New Research. You can even share folders. Type in the email address of the person you'd like to share the folder with and then invite them to view the folder. As long as they also have an EBSCO folder, they'll be able to see the contents of the folder that you've shared with them. If you encounter any problems or have any questions about using the EBSCO folder, please don't hesitate to come by the library and talk with someone. You can also chat with us, text us, phone us, email us, or even make an appointment with a librarian who'd be more than happy to help you work with this powerful tool. Thank you for watching.